Hello everyone, welcome to Carnivorous Plants Hub. Today we're going to be repotting a Venus, a couple of Venus flytraps that I have here. These are Venus flytraps that I grew from flower stalk propagations. You can actually still see the, the flower stalks sticking up there that these grew out of. And what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be repotting these for the first time from the early propagation stages to their more permanent homes, which are these pots back here. You can see I got three pots going here. So we're going to be kind of moving these Venus flytraps over into those pots. You can see I have three. There's one, two, three. They're definitely ready. We're going to talk a little bit about what to look for, how you know that yours are ready. Uh, we're going to definitely get into this though. Before we get into repotting these Venus flytraps, please check this out. I'm super pumped about teaming up with California carnivores. They're one of the most experienced and knowledgeable carnivorous plant nurseries in the entire world. They have a massive selection year round of all types of carnivorous plants there will definitely be something in their nursery you fall in love with. On top of that, they've also been generous enough to offer my viewers an exclusive 10% discount on their order when they enter CP Hub at checkout. That's CP Hub. Head on over and pick out yourself a new carnivorous plant to add to your collection. You know you deserve it. Let's go ahead and get back to the video. All right, maybe you can head on over to California Carnivores, get yourself a nice new Venus flight trap, grow some flowers, and do your own flower stock propagation. Remember, use that code CP Hub. But thanks so much for checking that out. Let's go ahead and start talking about this repotting that we're going to be doing here. So we have our pots over here. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to be moving these Venus flight traps over. It's one of the things that I wanted to talk about real quick is sort of just the, the soil a little bit. And then we're also going to talk about the pots that I'm using. And then also what I do to kind of prep these pots so that when you put your Venus flight traps in here, they have the best chance at surviving. Let's go ahead and talk about the pots. I use plastic pots. This one looks like it's terracotta, but I can promise you it is not terracotta. This is just plastic. Uh, all three of these are just plastic pots that I've had other plants in previously that aren't in there anymore that either grew out of them and moved on to bigger pots but I really really like the terracotta color so I always kind of go for that terracotta style I think the Venus flight traps look really good in there uh, there's a link in the description if you want to check these out so what I do to prepare these is I actually put a paper towel in the bottom you can see a paper towel down there I just kind of stuff it down in the bottom and what that does is that actually makes these a lot better for wicking up water it also prevents any type of clogging in the bottom of your pot and it also prevents the dirt or your, your substrate from falling out the bottom as well. So when you move it around or whatever, you may have a little water drip out but you won't have a bunch of dirt coming out. So sometimes you, a piece of perlite will get stuck in that hole and make it kind of hard for you to, or make it hard for that water to wick up. And, and you want to make sure that that water stays consistent and can wick up. These paper towels make it so that that water wicks up really, really nice all the time over a longer term than if you didn't have the paper towels. So. Make sure when you pick out your flower pot or your, your pot here that you have something plastic. Uh, you don't want any type of actual terracotta or clay, anything like that. Those will leach minerals into the water. And, and if you know anything about Venus flytraps, you know the minerals are, are not good for them. You want a substrate and a water that is devoid of nutrients and minerals. Venus flytraps do better in like distilled water, rainwater, RO water. Uh, if you have a TDS meter, just make sure that you are under 50 for Venus flytraps. I personally like to go even lower than that. So uh, just make sure that you have the right kind of water for these and the right kind of substrate. Today I'm going to be using a mix of peat moss and perlite. You can see over here, I have some silica sand in there, and I actually have a new ingredient that I've been testing out, and it's why the, it's one of the reasons that it's taken me so long for me to start selling my soil. But let's get in here real quick so you can see a little bit closer what I got going on in here. It's actually a crushed glass that someone might use for like sandblasting. Uh, what's really cool about it is when I first got it, I was a little worried that it might cut my hand or something, but I've been using it for quite a while now. It doesn't cut your hand, but what it does is it gives you kind of that larger silica sand and makes it so your soil is less likely to actually stick together and get really clumpy like this one here. One of the reasons we're changing it today is because the soil's gotten really, really clumpy and you can see it's almost like a brick in here. Um, and that's one of the reasons you want to get this changed. But yeah, so I got, I got peat moss in here. I got perlite. I got a little bit of silica sand and now I've started to use the, the glass, the crushed glass. And you can see it's, it's got kind of a yellow and green for the most part. There's some brown pieces, but for the most part, it's kind of a yellowish greenish color. So it's really earthy looking and it's really, really pretty. Let me show you uh, something real quick that has this in there. 
So here's one of my pings that I have growing with this glass mix and you can see the glass kind of sitting on top there. It's really actually aesthetically pleasing. It's really, really pretty and it looks really good when it's in the sunlight. The sunlight kind of gleams off of those and it makes it a really, really pretty substrate. So that's going to be one of the ingredients in the substrate that I'm trying to sell. I'm trying to figure out a way to get it a little more affordably and once I do that, and that's one of the things that's been hard for me uh, in getting this done. But this, this amendment here has just been really, really great, not just for aesthetics, but it just makes the soil a lot better. It stays much less clumpy. So keep on the lookout for that. That is coming soon, I hope. I know I've been saying that for kind of a long time, but uh, this little extra layer here has actually kind of delayed me a little bit. But I just really wanted to add this element to the soil because I think it's really, really cool. And it's also made for uh, just a much better soil overall. It makes it significantly less clumpy and makes it last a lot longer. So be on the lookout for that. Just make sure when you pick a substrate that you're using probably a peat moss mix or if you want a like a long fiber sphagnum moss that works too. Don't use any Miracle Bro products because they have uh, usually a fertilizer or additives in them which can be really really bad for the plant. So make sure that whatever type of, of substrate that you get or whatever type of peat moss you get or even if you're looking at long fiber sphagnum moss make sure that there's no additives in it that it's 100% pure sphagnum peat moss or 100% pure long fiber sphagnum moss so that's that's really really important avoid miracle grow they always add extra things to their soil so here we have our venus fly traps now this one is actually eight months old there is no 100% correct answer to how long should I wait before repotting these after from seed grown or from propagation and the reason there isn't is because look even in this example right here these are these have all been growing the same amount of time under propagation but look look at this little guy over here look at this one there's little little tiny ones here so you just don't know because they all kind of grow at different times so what I like to do is I like to wait till they're like maybe quarter or 50 cent piece size like these ones here and these ones are getting a little crowded so it's definitely time to move these over to their own pots. They're getting a little too big. You don't want all those roots crowding together too much. And, and when they get to be about this big, this is when I like to start to repot them. One thing I like to really clarify though on this is, you can see that my substrate's a little bit dry right now. And I think it's really important that when they're this young, so when you first propagate, one of the best things you can do is give them a lot of humidity until they start to sprout. And then once they start to sprout, I really back off on that humidity and I let them become a lot more dry between waterings because what I have found is that a lot of my propagations and even some of my seed growns that if I give them too much water and I keep up with the same amount of water that I was doing from the get-go, they actually will rot and die. So what I like to do is I like to, once I start to see a lot of green in here and they start to pop up and, and they're probably about this size actually, that's when I start to wait a little bit and I give them a little bit less water and I don't just keep them 100% in water all the time. I let them dry out between waterings and this one has done really, really well for the full eight months and that's making sure that I'm not giving them too much water. Actually. This one's a little overdue for water. I should have probably watered this a day or two ago, um, but I was kind of holding off for this video. So this one probably is, is definitely ready for some water. And we'll give it a nice big drink once we get it into its new pots over there. Okay, wanted to get the camera on the tripod real quick so I could have my hands free, but here we go. So here's our fly trap. We're gonna go ahead and get this out of this plastic container here that I was using for propagation. I actually should have noted too, I don't know if you can see, you probably won't be able to see because it's not very good lighting right here, but I do have a little colony of uh, springtails in here. And I'm not sure if they're they're showing up. I don't even know if they're on the surface right now. Sometimes they kind of burrow down when I mess around too much, but kind of hoping that those little springtails actually make the move from this over to the new pot. Springtails are really, really cool. They eat all your dead material. Uh, they don't bother your live plants, so they're kind of a neat little insect to have and really, really not harmful to any of the plants. They just like to eat all the dead material, which kind of helps keep your, your planter clean. So let's go ahead and get this started here. Let's open this up. So I want to be careful because I do have a little fly trap right there that I'm going to try to rescue. I have another one right here. Not rescue, but it's just a little early for them. So I shouldn't say rescue, but I just want to make sure that I give them at least a fighting chance. They should do okay, um, even though they don't really like being repotted sort of that young. Okay, so here's two. Here, let's go ahead and break these two apart. And let's see if we can see the rhizome. There we go, we got nice, big, healthy rhizome. See, this is one of the reasons I like peat moss right here. You see how easy that, that came apart? 
If we were using long fiber sphagnum moss, this would not have been as fun. Long fiber sphagnum moss is a great growing substrate. I think it works really, really well, but it's really kind of a pain in the booty when you go to repot. So look at this uh, pea moss just kind of falls right off and makes this process really, really easy. So there's one down. Let's see that pea moss just kind of falls right off, makes this process really, really easy. There we go. One thing to, to note about, I'm not gonna get really, really close so you can see these really well, but with the Venus flytrap, your roots will be mostly black and it'll have little white tips when they're healthy. So don't be worried if you see black roots. A lot of people get worried that their roots are black. It means that their plant is dead. That's not necessarily the case. This one's got a few of them here. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and keep these together because I don't want to put all these in separate pots because it's not really big enough yet to separate all these. So I'm gonna keep these together as one, but you can see I can very, very easily break this apart and make this several different plants, but I'll go ahead and keep this little cluster together Okay, let's see if we can get these little guys out here. Sometimes when they're this little, they don't take off, but sometimes they do too. Let's see if we can show you how little that is. Oh, a really little guy right there. Give it a shot as well. Okay, now let's go ahead and pack the soil. So the way you want to do this is you want to fill this up about halfway with soil, like so. Okay, and this bottom half you're going to want to pack down pretty good. You're not, not going to want to go too crazy. You don't have to pack it in there with the, the might of 10,000 men, but or women, women are strong too, the might of 10,000 people. Pack it down kind of like that. And then that way, this is another way to help make sure that your substrate stays low and stays in contact with, your, with the bottom. So that it does a good job of wicking that up. And this will also make sure that there's not a lot of settling to do once you get your substrate in. A lot of times if you just put your, your substrate in there and then you make a hole and you put your, your Venus flytrap in, you go to water it that first time, then everything kind of sinks down into the pot. This will help make sure that you don't have a lot of that happening. So let's go ahead and fill it up. On the second time, now I haven't packed it down yet, I just kind of put the dirt in there. I do like to pack it down just a little bit, but I don't like to pack it down a ton on this top part because you want to make sure that the water flows through there really nice and if you if you really punch this down really hard it'll brick up a lot sooner and really the point of the the perlite and the glass and the the sand in this in this substrate is to make sure that it doesn't brick up so that water does run through here really well but it continues to absorb the water correctly uh, so you don't want this too tight but what this will do this will, again this will help prevent a lot of settling once you get your plant in there so that that's pretty good you packed it down just a little bit but nothing too crazy so let's go ahead and get these other two done all right this is my biggest pot here so i'm going to go ahead and put my biggest clump into this one uh, what i like to do is i like to take like a pen or a screwdriver or whatever you can find in this case i'm you can see i've used can you tell i've used this before oh yeah there's a bunch of dirt in there um, so i use this sometimes just because it's sitting here for putting a hole in my substrate. So let's go ahead and put a hole in here. This, I like using this one because it's kind of thicker and it makes it kind of a nice big hole. Um, and then it's easier to get the, the roots kind of to go down in there straight because one of the things that's really important is that your roots do, do go down nice and straight because Venus flytrap roots really like to grow straight down. So they really, really appreciate that when they're given room to grow straight down. Um, and you can see these roots are gonna have a lot of room to kind of grow into here. I uh, actually have this drill bit here, so I'm gonna use this to kind of push the roots down in there a little bit. And then what you wanna do with this is you wanna bring the substrate up to just on the top of that rhizome to where those growth points are. It's a little bit trickier when they're this small because you're working with a lot less here, but very, very doable. So we'll get that down in there so that we'll pack it down just a little bit around those roots because we wanna make sure that those roots are down in there nice and good. And then when we're done with this here, when I'm done with all three of these, I'm gonna water these from the top. That's a really, really important tip. You wanna make sure and top water these because right now those roots may not be in, in contact with that substrate all the way through because of that hole. But when you water these, that'll make sure that that substrate kind of collapses in on that hole and make sure that those roots are on, in constant contact with the substrate, really, really important. All right, I'll put this nice size clump right here and help the roots down a little bit. There we go. So how's that look? Look how pretty those are. So then we got the, the main one there and then we got the little, two little guys in there with it. So we'll see how those, how those do. And if they start to grow and they get too big, then we'll go ahead and remove them from the pot and, and put them in their own little planter. Okay, now the last thing you wanna do here is you just wanna make sure and give them a good top watering. And like I said, this substrate was already wet because I soaked it. That's actually probably another thing I should have talked about a little bit, but you can see how that, see how that substrate is settling a little bit. That's what we really, really want. Normally you water Venus flytraps from the bottom. 
um, but for this first watering and then I'll do this probably once a month or a couple times a month oops I I'm using my left hand so I'm not very good here but the substrate's already wet enough but this will make sure that all that substrate settles in there and that we don't have any big holes it's okay to get your fly traps wet a little bit they they can be submerged it's not going to kill them I wouldn't do this all the time but it's not going to hurt them very much to submerge them a little bit in water and after this initial watering, your next couple waterings, or the next time you water, you'll want to water it from the tray and let the, that paper towel wick the soil. It's also good to call out too that make sure you do flush your substrate with whatever substrate you use. If you have a TDS meter, even better. I have a video showing you my, my uh, zero water pitchers. They come with TDS meters, so make sure you have a TDS meter so you can measure your water. What I do is I measure my output. I make sure and flush this soil until I get uh, at least below a 50. Personally, I go below 20, um, so I won't actually use my substrate until the water coming off of it goes below a 20. Uh, 50 says to be more acceptable. You might have to repot more often because there will be more common building up of minerals in your soil. Uh, you can also avoid that a little bit by doing a flush of your plant. That's just pouring the water on your plant, letting it come out the bottom, like outside, and then just doing that a couple times, flush it out. That will get rid of some of that excess minerals. All right, everyone. So uh, thanks so much for checking this out. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you thought this content was cool or if you want to see updates on these plants that I will definitely give you an update here in the next few months and show you kind of how they're doing also like this video if you thought this content was helpful liking and subscribing obviously those are things that help me out a ton I'm trying to start my own carnivorous plant nursery someday and uh, that, that's one of the reasons that I'm running this channel so your likes your subscribes all that stuff commenting uh, really helps as well so anything that you want to do I try to respond to all my comments so if you comment I will be there for you now it's, actually real quick let's take these outside so we can see that glass let's yeah, so check that out, look how, the, look how that glass really kind of shines in the sun. It looks really, really cool. Excuse the chickens in the background. And if you have chickens out there, you know they're always hungry. But yeah, they look pretty good. And the way that that substrate looks in the sun is uh, with that glass is really, really cool. But Anyway, yeah, make sure to uh, like and subscribe and all that jazz. And thanks so much, guys, for being here. And I hope to catch you in my next video. Bye.